Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to our Girls' Night In. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Lisa Tony, and I'm going to be your host for the evening, where we are all about bringing you some different things to keep you occupied while you're in quarantine. You're going to hear from a number of different women tonight, and they are bringing you their best ideas and tips for how to be organized, how to cook, different activities you can be doing, different things you can be listening to. So grab a cup of coffee or something warm and snuggly and cuddle up because this is time just for you. We want to encourage you. We want to point you to Jesus and we want to have you maybe laugh a little bit along the way as well. So thanks so much for joining us. And here we go. First up is Angelise Chevalier. So Angelise, tell us what you got for us. Hello, everybody. My name is Angelise Chevalier. I live in Claremont with my husband, Jason, with my two boys, uh, 12 and 10 years old, and my dog, Francisco, and my bird, and I think that's it. I'm here to share with you some cool uh, musical websites that I have uh, searched lately, and just a few simple things that hopefully will inspire you to look up there, because I know there is more in this time of quarantine there are a lot of institutions who usually don't let their stuff out there for free but at this time they are so let me show you a few things here so i'm gonna do some screen sharing with you you might see me small in the screen there we go and the first website i will show is this website called classical100.org and this is a website for usually just teacher, music teachers in the UK, but just in these times of quarantine until September, so through the summer, okay, they are allowing this for free, okay, for people like you and me. So um, if your kids are out there and they need some movement, you know, this is a good one because you can click in this section called movement, right? And I'll give you an example here. Hold down is a good one. And once you click there, you can read some things. You can see that this was by an American composer, Aaron Copland, uh, and there are several familiar American folk melodies, some cowboy songs that are uh, quoted in this music. But here's an example. So lots of uh, interesting things there, okay? Some other ones uh, here, let me see. Uh, you can also do storytelling, okay? So with the top 10, there's all classical music based on stories, okay? So there's all sorts of different works. Let's see a good one here uh, by Sergei Prokofiev. <laughs> tells you the stories here you can read to them you can learn with them of course one of the most famous uh talking about storytelling is uh peter and the wolf uh by also an art russian composer sergey prokopiev and this is the peter's theme early one morning lisa opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow so it starts with the story actually and in this story, every character comes with a melody, right? And pretty soon, your kids will hear, this is just the very beginning of the story. And you make them curious. They probably come and it's like, honey, I want to know what happens next. And you can go on YouTube and find Peter and the Wolf. There's lots of versions there. So there are options out there, okay? I just want to show you to register for this one. Go to this website, login.classical. Uh, you see it there, right? Login.classical100.org. And usually I know you can figure out stuff, but for this particular one, I had to uh, uh, research. And so I'll tell you, uh, once you put your first name and last name, you have to select your virtual school, uh, A-B-R-S-M, okay? So once you start typing virtual, this name would appear, you select there, and then you can join this for free, okay? 
I can, if this will be on Facebook Live, I can give you the website again, if anyone is interested out there, all right? And uh, another one I wanna show you is LA Opera. LA Opera is our famous opera company here in Los Angeles. Usually it's very expensive to go see an opera there, but these days they're giving some more uh, resources here for us. If you go to their website, uh, laopera.org, uh, and then type Opera Family Time, you see that there's a few things that you can watch with your kids there. There's the Prospector, which is uh, a story back in the time of California, Gold Rush. I watched this with my kids, 36 minutes, they were entertained. Uh, it's a, actually a mixture of opera slash musical. <coughs> Sorry, that's, that's my timer, that's not music. <laughs> Real life here, folks. And they also have some singers uh, doing some famous examples of opera, but in a funny way that will be very entertaining for your kids. So I wanted to uh, share this, this examples with you. And I hope this is just one example to help, to inspire you, to go out there and look for things. Like if classical music is not your thing, maybe you go look for musicals, right? You're into musicals and there are Broadway websites giving seven free trial, uh, free day trials at this time that you can watch any of those musicals that otherwise you would just be able to see on Broadway and, th and things like that, okay? So those are my suggestions of today and I hope you hear a lot of music during this quarantine as well as during the summer, okay? Bye. All right, that was pretty cool. Thank you so much, Angelise. Next up, we've got Rebecca Genzik, and she has got some tips for the kitchen for you. So can't wait to hear it. Rebecca, tell us what you've got for us. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Genzink, and I'm so excited to join you tonight for our Girls' Night In. I've been a member at Purpose Church for 17 years now. I can't believe how fast the time has flown. It really does feel like home. I met my husband there, and we live in San Dimas with our two girls who are 12 and almost nine. Oh my goodness, I just cannot believe how fast the time has flown. Well, tonight I wanna to share with you a favorite recipe of mine. It's for hot fudge pudding cake. You know, when we first started this whole quarantine time, everybody was talking about baking. We're together, let's bake, let's feast. Well, the Bible talks a lot about feasting and gathering, so while we're gathered as our family, we might as well be really, really obedient, right? Well, like I was saying, everyone wanted to bake, but all I could think of was the eggs. The eggs that were gonna be flying out of my refrigerator, and we didn't have that many. I was being really stingy with them. I said, we can't make cookies, we can't make cake, we need those eggs for breakfast. And then I remembered, hot fudge pudding cake. It's made with stuff that's all in my pantry, and it doesn't require any eggs, not at all. So let me show you how it's made. I've got everything all measured out here, and I'm posting the recipe, so I'm not gonna give you all the amounts and all that right now. It starts with flour. I start with my dry ingredients here and mix those together. Then there's some sugar. My recipe calls for about a quarter cup. I usually use a little bit more because the kids like it sweet. A little baking powder and then some cocoa powder. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of cocoa powder. It's divided. You use a little bit here in the base and then you use some in the topping later. I'm going to add my oil and then a quarter cup of milk. I told you I wasn't gonna give an ounce, but I am giving you a few. And then just a little bit of vanilla. Now, I'm using imitation vanilla extract, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. When you're baking, the stuff that makes pure vanilla extract so, so amazing, it kind of bakes out. So if you're going to use your real vanilla, which is a fortune right now, go ahead and use it um, in things that are going to be eaten cold or raw. So you're gonna stir this up all the way. Let me show you, it's pretty thick. So it's going to be your cake batter. I'm gonna scrape all of this stuff out because we don't want any of that goodness to go to waste. Now, after you get all of this mixed together, 
you have a little topping. And I think that it's the topping that goes together to make the hot fudge sauce that bakes up in the bottom, but I can't be sure. I haven't really looked at it to see like scientifically what makes it all happen, but what I can tell you is that it is magic. So when I'm done mixing that, I kind of stir the side around a little bit. I forgot to tell you, I did wash my hands right before I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to get all the good stuff off. The topping is made from a little bit of brown sugar and the rest of the cocoa powder. Now a little kitchen corn tip for you. You really only need to keep one kind of sugar in your house. Did you know that? You need to have white sugar, but you can make brown sugar just by adding a little bit of molasses to it. More if you want dark brown sugar, unless if you just want the light brown sugar. And then you can take that same white sugar blend it up for several minutes with some cornstarch, and then you get your powdered sugar. Isn't that amazing? I thought that was pretty cool. I'll post some links for that too, so you have instructions on amount. So you get this all mixed up together, and then just kind of spoon it over. You shake it, there's no real special method. Just kind of trying to get it all in here evenly. All right, now I'm gonna take you over to my stove. I've got some water that was boiling here. Let me make sure it's still nice and hot. It is. And I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of boiling water. I'm gonna pour that out. And again, there's no real like method to the madness. Just pour it over the whole thing. You do not mix it. You just pour it and that is all. So I'm gonna put this in my oven and it is going to bake for 30 minutes. So I will see you back here in 30 when I dish up dessert for my family. All right, you guys, 30 minutes went by in a hurry and I'm ready to take it out of the oven. This is our dessert tonight, so I hope it turned out good. Oh, it did. You can see there's like all this pudding stuff around it. I told you, magic. I'm gonna serve up just a little bit so you can see. Now, we really like it with ice cream, just a little bit, but we don't have any of that because quarantine, we ran out a couple of weeks ago. But I like mine, and so does Erin, with a little bit of caramel sauce. Oh, you gotta get some of that yummy fudge. Hannah likes hers with powdered sugar, and Leah likes hers with both, so between the four of us, we're gonna pretty much demolish this really, really quickly. In fact, we've demolished it with just three and even with two with just a little bit of leftovers, but you can stretch it if you need to. You can also double it if you need to. All right, you guys, enjoy. Have some chocolate on me. All right, well, that looks and sounds pretty yummy. Can't wait to give that one a try. All right, girls. Well, next up is Melissa Leopold, and she is going to give us some things that we can listen to, some podcasts that are her faves. So tell us, Melissa, what do you have for us tonight? Hi, Women of Purpose. My name is Melissa Leopold, and my family and I have been attending Purpose Church for a little over 14 years, both the Pomona and the Claremont campus, and we love them both. I've been a teacher in Belden Park for 35 years trying to figure out this distance learning thing. So this is my little office here. Um, it's, it's kind of fun and exciting, a new, brand new challenging time. But I wanted to share with you three podcasts that I'm especially loving, especially during this time uh, of quarantine. So the first podcast that I love is called Your Enneagram Coach. And you can follow her on Instagram. But she and her husband, Beth and Jeff McCord, have started this podcast, Your Enneagram Coach, and it is based on using the Enneagram to create a thriving gospel-centered life, to create a thriving gospel-centered marriage, just to be thriving and gospel-centered. And they have two podcasts so far. There are only two podcasts in, so you haven't missed too much. The first podcast is about the Enneagram typing system. And you may remember when Pomona Campus did a series on the Enneagram late last year, super impactful in my life. And we and my family have used the Enneagram to have great conversations about how to interact with each other. And the second podcast uh, on the Your Enneagram Coach podcast is about how each type is navigating this pandemic. So I would highly recommend 
that podcast, let me just read to you the mission from this couple, um, if that intrigues you at all. It says that their mission is for people to see themselves with astonishing clarity so they can break free from self-condemnation, fear, and shame by knowing and experiencing the unconditional love, forgiveness, and freedom in Christ. And I love that. This is an amazing book, Becoming Us, Using the Enneagram to Create a Thriving Gospel-Centered Marriage. I'm a six. Any sixes out there? Woot woot. But uh, type in your um, Enneagram number in the comments or chat if you can. I'd love to see who else is out there. But Your Enneagram Coach is an amazing podcast. I highly recommend it. Another podcast that I'm loving right now is called Behind the Scenes Podcast, and it is by Jeremy and Audrey Roloff. This is them here. They're from the TLC show, Little People, Big World, which I've watched for 15 years and I love. They're a young married couple with two young kids, and they are just intentional, intentional about being Christ-like. Intentional marriage, intentional parenting, just intentional. And they interview some great um Christian community members like Emerson Egrich, Mark and Jamie Nato, Jenny Allen, Jefferson Bethke. They're just a wealth of information. They intentionally want you to create a life that is making you and helping you become more like Christ. So I would highly recommend behind the scenes podcast for great marriage advice, great parenting advice, and just great advice on becoming more like Jesus. And then the third and final podcast that I love is an oldie but a goodie, The Dave Ramsey Show. Purpose Church did a series a couple months ago on financial peace, and I have just loved this man. He has changed my family's life. We did financial peace about eight years ago, and it has helped us weather a layoff. It's helped us weather this pandemic and helped us prepare for our future in a God-honoring way. And he has three podcasts a day, so if you miss one, there's one coming right after it. So I would highly recommend Financial Peace, University, Dave Ramsey, and the Dave Ramsey podcast. It is just God and grandma's way of dealing with money. And if you don't get the podcast, at least get the total money makeover because it has all the information in it. But I promise you cannot watch the Dave Ramsey or listen to the Dave Ramsey podcast without getting a lump in your throat for how God changes lives, um, both through finances and through everything else that he does. So those are just three podcasts that I'm loving right now. Your Neogram Coach, Behind the Scenes Podcast, and The Dave Ramsey Show. And I hope that you might find any of those impactful in your life as well. Take care and thanks, guys. Bye-bye. All right. That was so good. I can't wait to give those a listen. How about you guys? All right. Well, next up, we've got Debbie Lothar. And Debbie has put together some tips and tricks for keeping your kids organized in school season. So this is a perfect time for us to be gathering all that information and getting ourselves prepped. So give it up for Debbie Lothar. Hi everybody. Um, my name is Debbie Lothar and I've been part of the Purpose Church family for about three years. Uh, I work in the, um, in the office. I'm the, off the Purpose Kids office manager um, and it is my favorite job I have ever had. So um, even if I don't know you, I most likely know your children. Um, I've been married to Brian for 19 years this summer, and I have a son named Bailey who's 17, and he is way taller than me. And I have a daughter who is Reese, and she is 12, and she's going on 20. So anyway, I have some tips and tricks for um, being organized during quarantine, and I wanted to share them with you. Um, the first one is actually just three resources I have, and then the three I have three like tips and tricks that I've, things that I've tried to be organized so that work. Okay, um, the first one is called FlyLady.net, and she has a book called um, called Sync Reflections. Um, you don't need to buy the book; she actually has everything online at FlyLady.net. Um, if you haven't heard of FlyLady, you are missing out. She is awesome. She has. Um, if you're overwhelmed or disorganized or living in chaos, like she, she has systems that work. Like she's hardcore. She's, she's awesome. I love, I heard about her when I was, um, a young mom and I was, I was overwhelmed and I had no idea what to do or where to start. And she is just like baby steps and systems. Um, she's all about routines and blessing your family. And it, it is awesome. So flylady.net is the first one. Um, clutterbug.me is the next one. Um, it's also a website and um, that's free. And um, she has a 
um, quiz there called what kind of bug are you and um, since she's clutter bug she categorizes you into four different bug types and whatever bug type you are um, she has systems that actually work for your organizing type because not everybody is um, organized the same way or their brain doesn't work the same way and so different systems work for them um, what works for me and it may not work for you but um, the third one is called do it on a dime and um, it's on YouTube and her name is Catherine. She is from North Carolina. She has two little boys and she's a Christian. And she's really, um, she's quite encouraging. She um, has a lot of really good ideas and everything that she does is like on the cheap. Like she goes to Dollar Tree a lot. Um, she goes to Goodwill um, and she like repurposes things and it's, it's pretty amazing. So um, I definitely would recommend her. Okay, so the first um, thing I've done for organizing is I hate making lunches like it is my arch nemesis I don't like doing it at all so what I've done is I already did four of them just to um, save a little bit of time but you have everything that you have to make lunches you can do it by the week just stick everything in there everything that I had um, in that or in, that, in a bin and then I just organized it in here and it is like it takes like five seconds it is so easy um, then you just dump it in their bag the next morning and they're good to go. All they need is like a sandwich or um, leftovers or something and you can make five sandwiches and pop them in the freezer and then just, um, or buy like Uncrustables or whatever and just stick them in there. It's super easy. My kids like the same thing every day so this might not work. Um, if your kids don't like the same thing every day, I guess you could um, substitute the fruit or chips or something. But anyway, um, that has worked for me. The second thing is called a homework board and it has every single thing that they will need for homework and it helps them not to get distracted um, you can put it at the dining room table um, you can put it on the um, on the floor it doesn't really matter where you put it um, as long as your kid um, is right in front of it doing their work they can um, put the work that they've done already turned in you can think of work put the work to do on these little clips um, there's everything there's paper there I mean there's um, pens there's markers there's um, ruler, scissors, tape, stapler, glue, like whatever, it's all right there. So, um, and it was like super cheap to make, it's all Dollar Tree supplies. So, the last one I have to do, I'll show you, is um, our family command center. And um, there's Bailey's room, there's Reese's room, it's right in the middle. This is, um, if, um, if the homework board doesn't work so well, um, this is like everything. There's paper, um, school papers they can put in there. These are just um, wall pockets that I've organized. And then these are actually cookie sheets that I um, repurposed because they didn't fit in our um, in our oven anymore. So um, those they're magnetized, so that's cool. And then um, I have to organize that a little bit better, but everything they need is their pencils, colored pencils, markers, whatever. So, um, and then this right here is um, different kinds of paper. The one right there is um, just regular white paper and then um, notebook paper and then there is um, graph paper. So anything they need and then of course there's scissors and rulers there. So um, yeah, so that's, um, that's basically it. That's all I have. Um, let me know in the comments if there is any special um, tips or tricks that you have um, to organize and then I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Were those some great ideas or what? I love it. Oh, Debbie, genius. Woo, woo, love it. Thank you so much for bringing that. Okay, next we've got Katie Chowup. And Katie just wanted to share some of her favorite scriptures that have been a blessing to her. So she is going to just share with us, read some of her favorite scriptures. So give it up for Katie Chow. Hello, everyone. It's Katie Chow, and I'm here to share five Bible verses on fear. Are you ready? Number one, Isaiah 41, 10, it reads, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord. Number two, Psalms 56, 3 reads, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Number three, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Number four, John 14, 27 says, Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. So do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Amen. And lastly, 2 Timothy 1, 7 reads, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hope you have a great day. Be encouraged. Bye-bye. All right, you guys. Oh, we've had some great stuff tonight. And I want to share with you just maybe a little challenge that I've been thinking about. One of the things that I do is I teach a, a spiritual disciplines class. And it's always so fun uh, doing this class because we talk about what spiritual disciplines are and how they work and, and how to practice them. Sometimes they're kind of a lost art that we, we don't do. And one of my favorite ones that we talk about is the, the discipline of secret giving or secrecy. And I think this is one that's so challenging because we live in a society that always wants to say, look at what I did, look at what I did. And it's so hard to find someone who can be a secret keeper in your own life, right? Do you have very many people that you trust as your secret keepers? Or are you very good at keeping secrets yourself? I remember when my sister had her first baby, I was right out of college and I was actually staying at her house that night and I was so excited. She woke me up and told me she was going to the hospital and she's like, don't tell anybody. And um, as soon as she left, I called my sister, I called my mom, I, I couldn't help it, I was so excited. But she was so mad at me and rightly so, I had broken the secret she wanted me to keep. We had to kind of work that out and we did and it taught me a big lesson in secret keeping. But, you know, I was looking at scripture the other day, and one of the things that Jesus said is when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving can be done in secret. And it's so interesting that Jesus would say that. Jesus actually liked to do a lot of good things in secret. He would perform a miracle or be around a group of people and then say, don't tell anyone you saw this. Don't tell anyone. Keep this a secret. And why was that something that was so important to Jesus? I think he was modeling that for us, that sometimes when we're doing things that are good for other people, that there is a beauty, there is a richness, there is a, something that's really pure about just keeping that between you and the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I have a big mouth. Most of us have big mouths, right? We can't wait to tell people, and especially if you have kids. I mean, they want to tell you every blessed thing every moment, right? If they're little, not those of you who are teenagers, I know. But um, so one of the things I was just thinking about that might be fun to be kind of a, a challenge this week is to think about a way that you can do a secret act of blessing, a way to bless somebody, but then don't tell anybody you did it. Just do it and then keep it between you and God. Don't tell anybody. And then see what the Lord does with that in your own spirit and soul. It is called the discipline of secret secrecy, the discipline of secrecy. So I just thought I'd challenge you with that and, and see if that might be something fun for you to think about um, this week as we head into one more week of quarantine. Okay, well, we are going to head into a time of some worship and singing, and we've got Haley Gherkin lined up to bring us some songs. So, so excited she was willing to share with us this week. So y'all give it up for Haley Gherkin. Woo -woo!
thank you, Haley. That was so awesome. Oh, so good. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, as we get ready to close up, I've got one more guest for us tonight. And uh, if you have ever been to one of our Women of Purpose retreats, then you will know her and love her. It is Melissa Berry. Um, she is a dear friend to Women of Purpose, and she has recently moved up to Oregon. So she's not local anymore, but she was willing to send us in a video. And I just asked Melissa if she would pray over us as we get ready to close the evening. And she was so happy to do so. So um, ladies, let's pray. Melissa, thank you. Good evening, Women of Purpose. I'm so excited to be here with you right now to pray not only for you, but with you. Wherever you're at right now, can you create a little bit of space and let's engage in embodied prayer. That might mean putting our hands together, putting our hands up, getting on your knees, getting on your face, but let's get our whole bodies ready to engage in prayer and let's do some prayer business. Are you ready? Let's seek God actively with all of who we are. So if, if, if everything is noisy around you, I don't know about you, but I've got two three-year-olds running through the house. And sometimes I literally go in my walk-in closet and shut the door. So wherever you got to go to go, just do go in the bathroom, shut the door, wherever you got to go to be silent and still. And maybe you're like, my whole house is still and silent, but you know what? Sometimes our minds are rattling, right? So let's just take a moment, whatever you got to do right now to find a quiet space, even just within your soul, let's find that space and let's go to God in prayer. Are you ready? Okay, so let's deep, let's breathe in. Let's breathe out. Let's breathe in one more time. Let's let go of that anxiety. You ready to go to God? All right, I'm ready. All right, let's go to God in prayer. And so one way to go to God in prayer is I'm going to pray, but instead of me praying at you, and I am praying for you, but I'm going to ask you to pray with me, right? So you can even repeat the words or say amen, but engage in prayer together physically through your space, right? Or on your knees or on your face, in your closet, but also in your mind. You can sometimes repeat the prayer back or say out loud or engage with an amen, but that's what we're going to do. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Lord God in heaven, we come before you right now, and I just pray right now for this one listening, Father, that she would feel your presence. I pray, Lord, she would feel your comfort. I pray, Lord, your peace, your supernatural peace would fall upon her from the top of her head, Father, all the way down her eyes and her nose and her neck and her shoulders, Father, her arms, her back, her spine, her hips, her legs, her knees, Father, her ankles, her feet, through to her toes, Father, I pray your peace and your healing and your presence and your comfort. Father God, I just pray that you presence would be so strong with this woman right now that she would know that you are with her. I pray for this one right now that she would know that in the silence that you are there, that in the chaos that you are there. I pray, Father, that your presence would be so strong that she would know that she is not alone. Father, I pray for this run that you would put your Holy Spirit in her in such a powerful way. Father, that you would give her the courage. Father, fill her with the faith to come to you with her fears and her doubts. And Lord, I pray that this one right now would have the courage to come to you with her tears. I pray, Father, that you would release the tears. I pray right now you'd release the fear, that you would release the anger, Father, that you would give us the courage to come to you as daughters who trust that no matter what we say, no matter how we rage, no matter how we cry, that you love us and you care for us and you can take it, Lord. Let this one release her fear and her anxiety and her anger and her frustration. Lord, let her just release it before you and comfort us, Father. Comfort us in our crying. Comfort us in our anxiety. Comfort us in our tears, Lord. I pray for the supernatural peace of God that passes all understanding to come over this one, Lord, as she releases her bitterness, she releases her uncertainty, she releases her fears, Lord. And I just pray even right now for peace, peace like a river to flow over this one. If you wanna receive that peace, just say amen. Pray for peace over this one, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I just pray your presence 
in your peace. And Lord, give us the faith to release our fears. Give us the faith to confess our doubts. Give us the faith to embrace your comfort and your peace and your joy. Oh Lord, set our feet to dancing as we worship with you. Take away our fears of what other people will think. Take away our fears of what we will think of ourselves, Lord, and set us free to fully worship you. And as we do, may your presence fall strongly upon us. Help us to worship you now. Help us to worship you each day. Help us to receive your joy. I pray your blessing over this one listening right now, Father. Your breath, your blessing of peace, your blessing of joy, and the blessing of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Thanks for praying with me, friends. It's good to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, I always love you and you pray. Girl, you just right here, man. Oh, so good. All right, ladies. Well, that is our evening. So thank you so much for joining us at Girls' Night In. Um, if you would like to contribute to a Girls' Night In, we would absolutely love to hear from you. So send me your idea at lisa t at purposechurch.com. We'd love to get you in. It's so fun to hear from different ladies in our community and just let us know an idea or what you're doing to fill your time as you're in quarantine. So this is a great way for us to continue to build our community, encourage each other, and point each other to Jesus. All right, ladies, have a great night. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.